what is up my thrifty friends tabs here from the urban goddess shop today's video is a work with me it's monday i chat your ear off you get work done and we're going to talk about reseller stuff so if you're new to my channel i am a canadian reseller i'm a mom to two girls a wife i work part-time in a hospital pharmacy and i love to sell used clothing it is my jam here on youtube and i share everything about my business helping you grow a side hustle reselling clothing as well so today's video i'm like excited we have some good stuff to talk about but i've also been feeling some like real frustrations lately and i'm going to talk about them i at first was like nah i'm not even gonna address this and then i was like no just in case if anyone is having this feeling to message me and say say this stuff um, I think it just needs to be said right now. Okay, so we are going to get into that. Uh, first off is a life and business update, life-wise. Um, okay, since last week, I got back from Winnipeg. I worked two days. I had two days. I like actually literally had a day and a half to work on my business, and we left for the mountains. So any goals that I set for listing did not happen last week at all. I did not get any listings done. Um, it just, I was just, blah, blah, blah. it was just such a small window. And Jeff was like, do you want to take a long weekend? I'll take Friday off. And I was like, of course, because right now, I think like I've shared with you guys previously, I've just been feeling really overwhelmed in my personal life with um, stuff, just life stuff, not, not business related stuff, but life stuff. And um, trying to balance it better and maybe give myself some more space to relax, um, refill my cup, like, I don't know, I don't know, just trying to like mentally and emotionally get through some stuff. And uh, yeah, I think part of it is just like taking these breaks when the opportunity comes, go do it. And uh, we had a great, <laughs> great weekend. Friday, we were going to repair the roof on our shed. So we headed out west. We have a property out in the mountains. We bought it a couple years ago and we are renovating it and then moving that way in a couple years. I'm hoping when our youngest graduates from high school. Um, so yeah, we were going to repair the roof out there and it was just way more of a job than we thought it was. That was Friday, but uh, Saturday we made up for that and we did probably one of the most challenging hikes that we have done yet. It was just very hard. It was very steep. Um, it was a lot of root selection stuff, which I'm not very good at, but Jeff and Emma are, so I kind of just followed their path, but it was so challenging. <laughs> like it was so hard physically to get up um and then going down like up top it was amazing it was stunning it was worth every every drop of sweat to get up there but on the way down um my knees i don't know why but they get so sore when i hike down and they were screaming and it wasn't a very long hike like i think it was 6.2 miles round trip or it was supposed to be like a 10 kilometer if you're here in canada round trip to me it felt a little bit longer but like the steepness was quite a distance like quite quite a distance like we've done hikes before where it's like gradual and then the steep part is just like a fraction of the whole hike for this one it was like a shorter hike but the steepness was like a really big part of it anyways i'm rambling about it it was incredibly challenging and um worth it but i have been paying for it so it is monday i'm recording this video i'm gonna edit put it out today but my body is like exhausted <laughs> so mentally i feel like i filled my cup but physically i am just like pooped out so that's been the last week as for business i feel like sales have been okay nothing spectacular but definitely rolling through my u.s closet i think i saw about 400 dollars in sales over the weekend which is pretty good from i would say from friday till sunday and then my Canadian closet, um, it was like busy Thursday, Friday, and then it kind of dropped off for the, over the weekend. But sales are still doing okay. I think gross sales last week were definitely over a thousand, probably closer to eleven hundred. But I, I haven't crunched all the numbers yet, so I, I'm okay with that. I have not listed now for two weeks, which is quite a stint of time. Um, 
I think what's really pulling me through right now is the amount of listings that I've just put up, you know, three weeks prior to taking this break. So happy I was able to push those out and I'm really trying to get back into my routine. So I just hung up everything right now. I have one more haul from today that's downstairs that I'm going to have to hang up and I got to hunker into listing later today. My goal is to get 60 listings up. I do work tomorrow Wednesday 12 hour shifts and then I have a posh party which I'm so excited they're coming to Saskatoon on Thursday and yeah and then it's a long weekend this weekend so as always just a lot of things on the go um and just gotta make my list and check them off okay enough about me let's jump into the work with me uh okay first topic I wanted to chat about is the Barbie movie Barbie is sweeping the world not even just north america the entire world uh i don't know it, it personally brings a huge smile to my face every time i see people you know showing off their outfits going to barbie uh we personally will not be going to theater to watch it we will be watching it at home when it becomes available but i love seeing all the cute outfits that people are wearing and sharing and uh Man, their marketing team did a really good number on this. Like if we could take anything about marketing, follow Barbie, <laughs> follow what they're doing because it's phenomenal. Um, the outfits are gorgeous. Everyone's doing a lot of like pink inspired stuff. I don't know. We were driving downtown, I think one day last week and like we just saw groups of girls wearing pink. It was so stinking cute. So this is where I think as resellers, we need to take advantage of this. If you have anything in your closet that follows the Barbie aesthetic, and I think the big thing is like pinks, neon colors, you can Google it, but I think we all kind of know what Barbie aesthetic is. Uh, make sure that you are putting that into your keywords, putting the keywords somewhere in the description and also using the style tag on Poshmark because I feel like it is a searched term right now. I imagine Poshmark is going to be doing like today's trends and including Barbie inspired stuff in there. I, I actually haven't checked in a couple weeks. I do need to get back into the habit of checking out their today's trends and seeing what they're projecting and what people are looking up. It's happening and uh, I think that if you have anything pink right now, you need to make sure that you have the right keywords into it. Uh, I also have been selling a lot of pink items when I look back through my sales, but what I'd love to know is do you guys have any crazy Barbie core items that have sold recently? Please drop them down in the comments. I want to hear what are your thoughts about Barbie core? Are you noticing things selling in your closet? Have you have any cool pieces? Please, please share. I want to celebrate your Barbie wins because I'm just excited about this one. I feel like we've been talking about Barbie core since last September. I'm pretty sure I talked about it prior to Halloween saying that this is going to be like the costume for Halloween. Well, we're finally here almost one year later and it's it's much bigger than I think I anticipated that it was going to be, but very exciting. Next, uh, this is such a cool one. So this was a comment that was left on a video a couple weeks ago from Megan. Megan, I want to thank you so much for this. This comment hit home for me like this I felt needed to be shared to everyone and we were on the topic of death piles making sure you're listing your death pile I know I've inspired so many of you guys and I'm telling you the life without daunting death piles everywhere is very freeing <laughs> I promise you will have no regrets listing your death pile but she left a comment and she said um, another factor that most resellers don't consider is the velocity of money. The longer an item sits unlisted, the less time it has to multiply into more inventory. If you spend $10 and you sell for $50 with a $40 profit, then you multiply into four more items that you can buy. The more frequently that you do this, the more sales that you can make in a lifetime. And like, Oh, so well worded. Um, it's the same principle as compound interest with an investment account. The faster you flip wisely, the more money you can make. And yes, Megan, I just want to salute you on this comment. This like 
I hope this sinks in to you guys. Like this sunk into me. This resonated with me. I hope that this sinks in to you when you're looking at your death pile. Um, the faster you can flip your inventory, the more cash flow you can create into your business. And I think the, the twist sometimes can be spending a few more bucks also for higher in-demand brands that will flip quicker. Now, the only thing I wanted to state here is this works best when you have a minimum profit margin um, that you're looking for. I would not be a fan of this if it was spend $2, make $8, because you may find yourself burning out really quickly. I do think like minimum profit margins help make sure that your time is worth what you're doing, right? Because you need to calculate your hourly wage as well at the end of the day. And if you're flipping everything for three or five bucks, you got to flip a lot of items to make your $20 an hour or whatever you're shooting for. So yeah, I, I do think that this is a great analogy. It applies directly in how I run my business. Um, the numbers that she gave were a perfect example of how you can create velocity with your money. And um, I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts are on this comment. I personally loved it. I think it's a great way to look at this. It's like that negative equity, right? When you have a bunch of inventory that's just sitting there unlisted, it's not doing anything for you. The faster you can list that and get it selling and producing more money into your business, the more you can move forward. So if that's just one more more thing that like pushes you guys to list your death pile um listen to Megan Megan's got some wise words there thank you so much okay um next one is going to be a little bit of a rant I have two rants today and I am not saying these things to give people space on my channel but I am saying this so that if you have thought about reaching out to me and saying something similar you probably don't want to. I will share more details about my VA and my cross-border soon. Like I promise you guys, um, I know I said it would be a couple weeks, couple weeks. As you guys know, I took a two week break from YouTube. I have like so much on my plate right now outside of reselling that it's been a challenge. Also putting together videos like that, that are like how to's tips and tutorials they take a a decent amount of effort a lot more actually than these types of videos you you'd be shocked to know that um but yeah they do take a lot of effort i got to make sure i have all the puzzle pieces together that everything makes sense and that it's working right and like i've said before i've only been doing this for a short amount of time so to come out and share i don't even think i've worked through all the kinks yet but I will share with you guys as soon as I have everything done. I did recently share in one of my other videos how to set up your, your cross-border courier. The two companies that I'm working with that are helping me get my parcels across the border. If you haven't seen the video, I'm going to pop it up here. And I think it's towards the end where I talk about it. Now, what I don't appreciate is um, a viewer coming into my comments and berating me for not having a video out for her. And um, I have given the basics to anyone that wants to start figuring this out on their own. Uh, I use Upwork. I've said that before. Create an account. Check it out. There's like a super easy tutorial on how to set up your job posting. And then just start reading reviews and look people up. This is a very easy thing to do. Like I did this in my in, in bed. I don't want to say my sleep. It was in bed before I went to bed one night. I was just like, I'm going to see if how if I can figure this out. And I have reached out to other people. I'm not going to like talk about the whole comment. I shared it on my Instagram story. I'm sure many of you guys saw it, but I have had people ask me about it. And my response to them is go on to Upwork, set up an account. It's super easy. You'll be able to find um, people offering services. I will not be giving out my VA's name on YouTube. Okay. Like I, I, I can't, it doesn't make sense for me to do that, especially with 10,000 subscribers to this channel. Um, she could not possibly serve everyone, but there are like hundreds of people doing the same job. And I know quite a few other resellers that are using VAs that have different ones that are happy with them. So there's lots of capable VAs out there. Now, 
I don't know if using a VA is right for everyone. There is an additional cost into your business. You are required to have some processes in place. You do have to be prepared to manage a contract em employee. There are things that you have to let go, that you have to give them access to your Poshmark account. Like there's other complications. And I think that if you struggle with the concept of creating an account on an app and trying to work through the steps, which it's literally like a three-step process, you probably aren't ready to have an employee to manage either because that alone comes with more work created as well. So I just want to say here <laughs> that there will be a video coming out. I encourage all of you guys, if the thought is that you want to get a VA, just go on to Upwork, set up your account. It's very basic and do a basic job posting. All I did was look at their tutorial on how to do one and typed one up. Um, it's so simple and then you can start looking through the people and selecting who you want to try working with. You can do small badges, maybe do 10 listings at a time, see how they do and then go from there. But yeah, I, I, I just want to say, I know everyone wants to know how to do this, but I don't think that this is for everyone. It's not Having a VA isn't for the masses. It just doesn't make sense, I think, financially for a lot of people. Yeah, I don't know. If for any reason you feel like coming into my DMs and getting angry with me that I haven't put out a video for you on how to do something, I would suggest you don't. It's like the quickest way to get blocked. And um, that's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, this person really, really rubbed me the wrong way and she's now blocked on Instagram and uh, I won't be tolerating comments like that. So I just want to say in regards to my entire channel, if you do not approach the comments with love and with a general positive nature, um, doesn't mean you can't complain about something, doesn't mean you can't express how you feel, but if you come at me negatively or aggressively, I will either block you on Instagram or I will ghost you on YouTube and your voice will never be heard here. So please just let that sit with you before you write a comment or message me. Yeah, sleep on it. Think about it. Think about it for a day before you do it because that's something I'm trying to do now. Before I share something or say something that maybe is negative, I'm trying to think about it. I have thought about this for a couple days now and I was like, no, this needs to be said. It's not okay. You guys have to trust that I'm I'm working on this and I feel like the people that are truly in my tribe know that I will have something out to help you guys. I just need a little bit more time. Okay, not even going to talk about that. Um, honestly, even as I talk about it, I don't even feel as upset about it as I did on the weekend. Like on the weekend, I was just so annoyed with this, with this person's message and now I'm just laughing and I'm like, yeah, whatever. All right, let's move on to another topic. eBay stock prices drop and earnings are below projected. But don't jump in here and think that this is eBay, you know, going on the down slope. Don't write them off yet. So eBay has stated that they're making changes this year focused on categories, more focused categories as well, like automotive, AI, clothing, authentication. They're trying to get the um, what's the new generation? It's not Gen Z, Gen Y. I don't even know what it is. The new generation of shoppers. They're trying to attract them. They're going into streetwear more. They're getting more authentication for designer streetwear and they're trying to attract in just a new buyer base. So they have stated that they're seeing an increase in customer satisfaction and they're also seeing an increase in the younger demographic now using eBay. So they're saying, yep, yeah, our sales are down, you know, more than they were projected. Stock prices reflect, they've dropped a little bit, but they're saying they're working on building the app and improving it. So money has been kind of diverted into other areas of eBay than what we were typically seeing. Okay, yeah, these are all things they've been talking about that they're working on this year. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I The other thing I was actually curious about is that live selling that they had. I actually don't hear very much about it anymore. And I 
never saw one. I never participated. I thought they were doing some beta rollouts, but um, if you guys have any information, do you know what's going on with their live selling? Um, are they rolling it out? Is it something they're putting a hold on to? You guys might know more than I do about that one. Uh, okay, let's take it over to Poshmark. So have you, I know you guys have noticed this because it is absolutely crazy what's going on right now and it is the relentless scammers on Poshmark what the scam is is they create an account they comment on your listings and they're like hey I can't see the pictures very well can you email me and they'll do their email with spaces so that you know Poshmark whatever doesn't catch it and um, bleep it out but anyways it's like so intense. I can't believe how many of these comments I am now getting a day of people trying to take the transactions off of Poshmark. And these are straight up scams. If you're receiving them, report them as transaction off Poshmark and then mark them as spam to get rid of them. I actually had one person with the same like weird, it was like a really weird profile picture. I think that's why it stood out so much. Created four different accounts in one day and comment on my listings like four different accounts because I kept reporting them and I was like reading the name and it was like a kind of a strange guy's picture and they had like women's names which to me really stood out why I was like oh my gosh this is the same person I just couldn't believe it I don't know how Poshmark is going to reduce this I don't know what they're doing I I think us as sellers know that this is a scam, but how many people that just like hop on the app to, you know, sell a couple items are falling for this or are getting like super shady feelings about Poshmark right now where they're where they're getting like that whole scammy feeling, right? I don't know. Either way, I think it's completely out of hand and Poshmark needs to address this because I do think it's ruining the experience for people. I mean, like I said, us as resellers, we know this is scam. We market as spam. We move on. But it's the people that don't know. It's the people that just come on the app a couple times that are probably thinking, what is going on here? So I hope Poshmark deals with that soon because it's just getting worse and worse by the week now. All right, uh, we got a couple more things. So Lucy asked a great question recently and she said, how do you know if an item is current? And this was kind of like hard where I was like, oh, this is a really good question. And part of being a reseller to me is knowing like what's trending and what's current and what's old. And it can be hard to tell the differences. So do you have to sell items that are on trend for them to sell. I don't think you do, but I do think it helps your items sell faster, knowing what's trending in different categories and different aesthetics and different demographics. My best advice for you is to follow brands on social media or through their email sign up. So when they have, you know, new drops like their spring style, their summer style, their fall styles that are coming out, you know what's trending and when you get these emails or if you're looking on instagram or however you're searching these up you can even go to youtube and look for trending fashion in fall 2023 and you'll get a ton of videos where people are putting together the fashion trends that are coming out but when you look at these things what you want to pay attention is to the style the colors the cuts the patterns the material contents look at the factors like that and then when you're outsourcing try and find similar styles similar patterns similar cuts um the other thing i kind of look at i'll search items on google and then try and look at the stock photos a lot of times you can age you can tell the age of an item by how it is styled haircuts of the models, like different factors. Um, you may also see this item pop up where someone's already tagged the year into it. Yeah, I don't know. It can be hard. These are some of my best techniques that I use. Google Lens is another one. Sometimes you'll be able to get a year or find out how old an item is. But I think ultimately, when you become a reseller, it's like repetitive comparative price shopping and looking items up. And that helps develop the 
the knowledge of what is current, what is old, you know, placing things in the decades. And then also just always looking up solds and looking up what is currently trending that's selling on whatever app that you are selling at. Um, I also think that like this best applies to women's modern clothing, but I think you can apply this into vintage as well. There's going to be big vintage um fashionistas I don't even know what you would call it fashion influencers and they're going to be sharing styles and trends that are vintage that that are current right now right that what are people looking for like sometimes there's certain patterns or certain cuts that people are looking for and you should be able to get some information from those two so my two big sources for finding out what's trending is going directly for an email sign up for the brands that I sell the most of and then also fashion influencers and you can just search certain fashion aesthetics and you'll be able to find influencers that way. Remember, reselling is a game of knowledge and knowledge is power in reselling. So the more that you know, the more that you educate yourself, the more research you do, the better reseller you will become. Um, I think a couple of years ago, the whole like throw a spaghetti noodle at the wall and see if it sticks worked. But I feel like in 2023, that's just not, that's not the way you should be approaching your business. Make sure that you are researching what is trending, um, what brands, what styles, how old is the item and has it recently sold? Are people actually looking for this? And that'll help you just have more consistent sales in general. Okay, um, one more kind of rant, but I think it's a good topic. And especially with sales being slow for so many people, we start to look externally, like why is our business failing? Why are we not seeing sales? And I think that this is a common thing that people do. Rather than look internally and go, okay, what am I sourcing? Are these items desirable? Are people actually shopping for them? Are these good quality pieces? Do I have good listings? Do I take good pictures? We start to look externally and we wanna blame externally for our own failures. So recently a viewer reached out to me and a fellow reseller and in conversation it was stated that automation had ruined their business. And um, they stated that they also had tried various automation tools and feel that they were flagged quite a while ago and are continuously being penalized for using automation through Poshmark. Um, they also stated that they're doing the exact same thing that they've been doing for a long time and uh, coincidentally, when they canceled their automation tool, their sales picked up six days ago. So I wanted to address this in a video because I feel like this is a common thing. They also stated that one of my other viewers talked to them and said they felt the same way. And I was just like, OK, I'm really not into the drama. I really don't want to blame external things for the failures in my business. And um, I think it's hard to troubleshoot people with so many variables. And I always say this, when someone comes at me, I'll be like, okay, so what variables did you have? What's your control? And a lot of times there's just too many variables to decide what actually worked, what actually increased sales. And part of the reason why sometimes I'm hesitant sharing things, I will share, I'm doing like 20 different things. What is actually working? I don't know. I change things that I do in my business continuously until something works. When something works, I'll do it for a couple of weeks. When that stops working, I'll make another small change in my business. Reselling is like forever evolving and finding ways to make sales and improve your business because we are business owners. So back to this, um, I think sometimes when we are struggling as a reseller. We are quick to blame outside causes. It's the algorithm, it's Poshmark, it's eBay, it's it's my thrift stores, it's whatever. It's none of it is ever our fault. And I think we need to look internally at ways, again, that we can improve. We are solely responsible for the success of our business. No one else is responsible for the success of our businesses except for us. And um, I know in the past that I have blamed Poshmark here and there, but honestly, like in the last probably six months, I've just tried to change the way I view things this year. Um, I'm always looking internally. I'm always asking myself, like, how can I improve in my business? What are my next moves? Um, what is the market dictating right now is in consumerism. 
there's so many ways that you can strive to succeed in your business. But to message me and tell me that, you know, uh, automation tool ruined your business, I just don't believe this. Um, I will also say that no automation or strategy will trump bad inventory or bad listings, okay? So no amount of promotion will help you sell your items if they are not quality pieces, in demand, on trend, in style. Like they don't even have to be on trend. Like they can be like obscure brands that people are looking for. They just have to, there has to be a market of people looking for what you're selling. Um, what worked two years ago, even six months ago, is no longer working for me. Um, do I think that live selling has had an impact on reselling? A hundred percent. But I've been saying this from day one with live sales. I no longer compete with them. I am not sourcing items that are readily available in live shows because if I'm trying to sell them for 20, 25 bucks and they're selling them for five or seven, I can't compete with that. So part of my business model over the last, we'll say six months, has been transitioning into items that just aren't readily available in the live shows. And there's definitely a lot of items that are not available in live shows that are hard to find at, in the secondhand market. And I think you need to try and find those. Um, also, if you are comparing your business to two years ago or even a year ago, you have to think there was so much money being pumped into the economy and into people like, you know, I don't want to say bonuses. What was it? It was like from the government. Like they were just giving money to put money into the economy because of the pandemic. That is not happening anymore. There is no more money pumping <laughs> into people's pockets. And I, I've been talking about this for the last few months and people are in tight positions. The economy is tough. Consumerism is down all across. The governments are trying to um, suppress the inflation, right? And in that, it is pinching people. And if you do not understand this, you need to do some more research because I firmly believe a lot of people are feeling this and that also has an impact on our sales. So I encourage you all that if sales are really slow, that you use this time to look inside your business, whether it's improve your photographing, improve your sourcing, maybe you're more selective, maybe you go back, you go through your old titles, you go looking for more relevant keywords. If you have listings that were two years ago that aren't selling, you probably need to redo that listing, okay? You probably need new pictures, you probably need to redo the whole body of that listing because so many things have changed in the last two years and you could probably apply some like new aesthetic keywords to it. Um, I just wanted to say like a lot of days I feel exhausted trying to troubleshoot other people's I don't want to say problems but like issues within their business because a lot of times this is like where I firmly stand and you guys know this because I talk about it all the time I truly believe the key to success in reselling is quality pieces good listings and fabulous photos and i think with those three things you can do very well reselling if you do not have quality pieces your listings stink <laughs> and you have poor photos i i think you're on the struggle bus i think it's always going to be difficult i i think there's a lot of factors that go into reselling um but yeah i don't think that poshmark truly is tracking down and cares about automation. Now, if you're abusing it and you're sharing your closet 12,000 times a day, yes, you may be flagged. But I think if you are within the safe limits, um, I don't think anyone's trying to penalize you. And uh, I know lots and lots and lots of resellers that are using automation whose businesses are doing fine. So please don't let that conversation get into your head as well. If you feel like something isn't working in your business, just stop doing it. Make changes. You don't have to blame everything on everyone else. But anyways, there's my two cents. I hope that 
if you are seeing slow sales that you are looking for ways to improve right now because personally i am okay listen sales are slow i'm trying to come up with better inventory i'm trying to improve my photos i'm just trying to find ways to make sales we're all in the same boat here and um I will continue to use automation like that's not even a question unless Poshmark takes away sharing which I do not see happening or the whole offers to likers things like that I'm gonna keep using it because when I start doing that by hand that's when my phone never leaves my face and I, I refuse to go back to that okay end rant I like I'm telling you guys people have been in my dms so hard i'm like trying to take a mental break i'm trying to like have a little mini vacay i'm like just trying to give myself space and it's just like in my face in my dms it's just been it's been a weekend <laughs> it truly has it's been a weekend okay um oh tiktok this is something interesting that i saw tiktok is stepping into luxury resale so it looks like they have been testing the market and they're looking for, I guess, the demand of luxury resale through the TikTok app. I didn't know this, but I guess they've been doing TikTok. What is it? It's like selling on TikTok. People have already been doing selling. I don't think it's available here in Canada. I'm also not a huge TikTok user, which may be why I don't know very much about this. Yeah, it sounds like they started TikTok shop feature but it seems to be more for like brands with like mass amount of items, like similar to Shein or Timu type things. So basically you have like a couple items and you have like a whole warehouse and they're selling it that way. I think that's my understanding of it. I'd love to know what you guys think. Did you hear about luxury selling on TikTok? Um, have you been in any shows? What are your thoughts? I'm going to have to look more into this, but I just thought it was worth tossing in here. And um, I don't know if it's something that just anyone can get into. That's the, that's the other thing. I just thought it was so crazy. TikTok um, is jumping into the live selling as well. Okay, Poshmark news. I don't really have any. Um, I like to say no news can be good news, right? And it seems like they're continuing to roll out live selling and promoted closets funny story after i put out last week's video where i was like i still don't have access to live selling on the u.s side despite the fact that i am hosting a live show for poshmark canada this week and um their support actually reached out to me i think it was like wednesday maybe and said that they're about a week and a half behind so they were like please give us another week and a half we're trying to approve everyone that was in the training now whether that's true or not I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess I'll know by the end of this week. If I do not have access, we'll be talking about this next week again. But at this point, I am checking like twice a day and I still do not have access to the live selling, despite the fact that I took their live selling virtual learning session or whatever. And um, yeah, I know a bunch of you guys commented below that you also, I know some of you guys did get access and that is so awesome. I'm so happy for you. But I also saw there was a bunch of people that said the same situation as me. They took that training. They never got access. Um, please keep me posted in the comments if you are granted access because maybe they're kind of working through all of us. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see what they're doing. Okay, side note, um, I do not have access to promoted closets as well. I know a lot of people have been reaching out to me to ask what I think about it. And I'm really holding off putting out a video until I have my own experience and information. I really don't like basing um, information in my videos on other people's data because of variables and things like that, where I can... I know the quality of my listings and things like that. So I will talk about it when I get access to it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have access for quite a while. But on the topic of promoted listings, uh, Posh Sidekick actually has a feature called promoted listing. And it is an additional feature on the Sidekick um, automation tool that you can pay to have access to. I think it's like $14.99 a month and you can promote up to seven items. So usually I'm promoting, I do have access to this on my Canadian closet and my US closet. I am using Posh Sidekick to automate both closets, which I think is going really well. I like it. Both of my, I'm just going to do a little side note. Both of my closets are set to do a 30 
20% offer as a first offer. So if you're wondering how I have mine set up, that's what I'm doing. I am priced to allow 30% discounts. Um, okay, so how to use the promoted listings on Posh Sidekick. I usually pick items that have the most likes. So I will filter by likes and pick out of the top 10, I will choose seven and promote those. What I like about it is that this increases the views on your listings. I usually get increased likes on these listings, which is more opportunities to send out offers. I also want you guys to keep in mind, and I feel like I said this already in the video, promotional services will do nothing if your items are junk or your listings are poor. Please keep that in mind. You need to still do the work. You still need to have quality items with good listings, good pictures, um, keywords, things like that in order to promote them. And sometimes I wonder that too, when people are using the promoted closets on Poshmark, um, I'm wondering what the quality of listings, cause I hear like two very different responses. I've seen people share on Instagram with crazy results. And then I've seen people share with like really crappy results. And I wonder what the difference is. And that's why I was like, I'm dying to get access to it so that I can kind of look at my own listings and figure out which ones are seeing results. But yeah, um, I just want to throw out, if you don't have access, you could always use the Posh Sidekick promoted listing feature. It's something I personally use. And uh, yeah, I think it has equated to sales. Again, it's getting my items in front of more eyes and getting more likes. And every like is an opportunity to make a sale. Okay, last one, we're gonna wrap up this video. Uh, we're heading into August and I'm hoping, I'm sure you guys are hoping that summer slowdown is winding down. For those that are experiencing it, like myself, I feel like sales should start picking up soon. In theory, without economy crashing, sales should slowly start to pick up. I have noticed sales have been okay the last you know week or so but i feel like it's still early to be saying this i want to know how are you preparing for the fourth quarter so we're going to be coming up to the big fourth quarter this is where usually people see a lot more sales some people say they don't and some people say think they do i tend to see more money coming into my business but i feel like it might just be for me personally because fall and winter items just sell for a higher dollar value and I'm able to sell more. Like, I don't know if it's just because I'm able to source so many sweaters, it's easier for me to turn over that inventory. I don't know, I think there's like a few variables in that, but I would like to know, what are you doing to prepare for the end of the year? Yeah, for me, it's just stocking up on as many fall and winter items that I can get my hands on and I am listing them right now i'm not even saving them i'm starting to see fall and winter items selling i just sold a pair of sorel ankle boots last week or during the weekend so people are starting to shop if you have the items make sure you're getting them listed but yeah what are you doing i'd love to hear how you are preparing for the end of the year right now okay so if you enjoyed this video and it helped you in your reselling business please make sure to give me a thumbs up and tap subscribe it's like the easiest way to help me in the youtube algorithm and help my channel out i so much appreciate it also i am wishing you guys so many sales and i will see you next time bye